Good afternoon from the Water Utilization Learning Center. My name is Brian Olson, and I wanted to do a quick review of some of the work that we did in 2019 looking at uh, fungicide response on corn. And so we had two studies, uh, one that was uh, around Hershey, Nebraska, looking at uh, uh, fungicide applied to uh, corn pivot. And so the, the south half or the bottom half of that pivot had Delaro 325SC applied at uh, tassel while that north half did not. And so you definitely see a greener color in that aerial imagery uh, from that application of the Delaro uh, when you look at the August 4th to August 29th uh, pictures. And so what was the yield from those corn products? Uh, we uh, on average saw about a five bushel increase in yield uh, on those corn products. Uh, when we had the uh, fungicide applied. And again, this was irrigated. On dry land, we also saw a positive res response of around eight bushels uh, per acre when we applied Delaro at the R1 growth stage. So again, that tassel R1 growth stage, we, we saw a positive response on both irrigated and dry land. And so what does that uh, look like as we move forward? Here's the uh, legals for those studies. So again, there's a lot of factors to consider when evaluating if a fungicide is going to be of value to your operation. Uh, obviously, cost of that product. Uh, is it irrigated or dry land? When we're looking at irrigated fields in uh, you know, eastern um, Colorado, do they have good water? Uh, Western Kansas, do they have enough water to carry that crop through the growing season? Dry land, obviously there's big differences between dry land and Eastern Nebraska versus that Western Kansas area. Uh, but again, uh, we did see some big benefits uh, of that uh, fungicide application at that DT timeframe in a, a uh, environment with low uh, disease pressure. Uh, when we're looking at uh, diseases, though, there is uh, a website here that uh, is highlighted. Uh, the universities have gotten together to track progression of diseases such as southern rust. Uh, so I encourage you to uh, look at that, uh, look at that to see how, uh, for example, southern rust is blowing in from the south. Another important factor is: does your uh, corn product uh, have resistance to that disease? Um, you know, we, we obviously have some differences in how our corn products are going to respond uh, to these diseases. And so that's, a, that's uh, another important factor to work with your uh, local uh, seed sales representative and understand how those corn products that you have are going to respond to the diseases that may be increasing in your area. And then environment. Uh, hot weather uh, is important for many diseases, but they also need humidity. And if uh, you know it's uh, just hot, dry, windy weather, that's going to be uh, there'd be a low chance of having uh, you know uh, disease uh, progress. But if we get into a time frame where we've got some higher humidity, uh, that would promote uh, uh, some of these diseases from taking off. Uh, so again, if you want to learn more about uh, diseases as a whole, uh, corn diseases, please join us. Uh, for a webinar with Tamara Jackson. She's a pathologist for the University of Nebraska, and that'll be on July 1st at 1230. So with that, uh, uh, again, I want to thank you for your time, but uh, uh, you know, obviously uh, some big decisions coming up uh, as we look at uh, putting out another input on those cornfields, but we did see some very positive responses uh, from uh, the studies that we did in 2019. Although they are from one single location, one irrigated, one dry land, we did have uh, some very positive responses. So with that, we'll talk to you in the future about other agronomic topics from the Learning Center. Thanks for watching this video from the Gothenburg Water Utilization Learning Center. For more information, please call 308-537-4500.